Welcome back to Crips, Graves, and EVP. Today, let's look at the graves of a judge who was murdered and his wife, also murdered, shot in the head four times. It involves the Dixie Mafia. Let's take a look here at Crips, Graves, and EVP. Well, it looks like the fog is rolling in. In this graveyard, here lies the body of Vincent Shirley. Vincent Shirley was an Air Force Colonel who later became a teacher of law at the university. Later, he opened a law office and was a criminal defense attorney. He opened it up with a guy named Pete Hallett, who was also a defense attorney. Their law office defended the Dixie Mafia. The Dixie Mafia, very powerful in Mississippi, here in Biloxi, Mississippi. The Dixie Mafia is not to be confused with the La Costa Nostra. Frankie the Bull Gravano and Michael Francis would laugh at that. No, but they were a mafia in Mississippi, something certainly to be dealt with. The corruption came from the mayor's office, they controlled some banks, and definitely the sheriff's office. It's a great place to visit, great place to be now. But back in 1987, it's another story altogether, the sheriff's office was pretty corrupt. Not all of them, of course, but some of the top people at the sheriff's office. Now, Margaret Sherry was Judge Sherry's wife. The names to remember are Pete Hallett, who became mayor of Biloxi, Mississippi. Margaret Sherry was running against him. She had lost to become mayor and then was running again against Hallett to try to become mayor. Remember, Hallett was the defense attorney for the Dixie Mafia, along with Judge Sherry. If you remember, I just told you that they had a law office, defenders of the Dixie Mafia. Pete Hallett got a telephone call at his office saying that the judge was supposed to be on the bench on that day, but didn't show up. He says, let me call him. He calls him, nobody answers. So he gets his uh, junior executive along with him, go down to his house, pulls up to his house, tells his junior uh, law executive to go up to the door. And he went across the street. Now this part to me is kind of fishy. If that's your friend, all you do is go you pull up to the car, you see the cars go up to the door and knock on the door. He pulls up to the uh, house, tells the other person, doesn't even know them, go up to the door. I'm going to go across the street and ask if they've seen them at all. And then he goes, uh, calls them over. He says, hey, I knocked at the door. The door is open. So he walks back across the street, goes up to the door. The door is open. So he walks in, walks in about nine feet sees the judge dead with three bullets to the face and walks out. Very important. It's very important to know about that part. He walks into the door about nine feet, looks, comes back out seconds later and tells his partner, they're dead. They're dead. Very important because he didn't have time to go all the way to the back of the building and see Margaret's body who got shot four times in the head. So to me, that looks a little bit fishy, right? But it took 
10 years to figure out this crime. So the judge's daughter and the FBI agent, Keith Bell, they really, really checked into this case and they found out that Hallett, Mayor Hallett, made 300 telephone calls, 300 telephone calls to a Louisiana prison, Angolia prison. They found out who he was talking to. It was talking to one of the people that the judge and Hallett, Sherry and Hallett, who owned a defense attorney partnership together, who represent uh, the mafia. Well, the chief head of the Dixie mob was Nix. Mr. Nix, Mr. Nix was running a scam called the Lonely Hearts Club scam. It was attacking the gay community powerful business people who didn't want to be outed were were paying extortion money to him in prison because the guards let them use the phone to do these these scams that were being paid off that money was sent to a safety deposit box at the bank who owned the safety deposit box the safety deposit box was owned by Pete Hallett, Mayor Pete Hallett. Pete Hallett made a trip to the Louisiana prison. There at the prison, in Angolia prison, he said and talked to mobster Nix and told him the $500,000 that was accumulated from this gay Lonely Hearts Club scam with the extortion money was gone. And he says, where did it go? He said, I don't know. Peter Hallett told mobster Nix that the safety deposit box only had my name and Judge Shirley's name. Now that's very, very important because Judge Shirley probably wouldn't be dead today had he not told that mobster those words. He said, the names on the safety deposit box was mine, Pete Hallett, and Vincent Shirley. Judge Vincent, Vincent Shirley. So he told that mobster that, and that mobster sent out a hit on him. Interesting about the mobster, super interesting about that mobster, Nix. Came from a great family, an honorable family. In fact, uh, his relatives are sitting senators. His mother, was the very first female lawyer in all of Oklahoma. First one ever. But nevertheless, Nix lived a life of crime. And I found out it goes much deeper than that. This is important. Nix was accused of the murder of his wife and literally pointed at him in court by a man named Buford Pussa. Now the young people will not know who that is. Check it out. Walking Tall movie. Go see it. It's about Buford Pussa. He was a sheriff that didn't uh, take any bull. And he used to carry a big stick and he would uh, go to criminals that were doing things and they tried to hurt him, he would start swinging this giant bat, if you will, and start knocking out some RBIs. 
real bad injuries. So he was driving down the road and they shot him in the jaw and they shot his wife in the head. And he said, it was Nick's. The Dixie Mafia mob boss, Kirksley Nix. That's who he said did uh, had the hit done. Apparently the person who did the shooting was a man named White that shot and killed his wife, Buford Passa. Now you want, sorry about the shaking. You want to definitely go out and check that out. White is the one who shot Buford Passa. But remember, it's Nix who had Buford Passa's hit put on his wife and him. But he also had a hit put out on Judge Sherry also. People don't know that part of the story. So it's very interesting to me. Nix was put in prison in 1972 because he went and shot a grocery executive. That grocery executive he thought would have a lot of money. So he went in there with a bunch of guys in order to do a robbery. He went into the house and he shot the grocery executive, killing him. But his wife wouldn't take that sitting down and took a gun and started shooting back and hit Nix in the stomach. Nix got in the car and apparently went to the hospital, I guess. And because he did that, he got arrested. And he's been in jail since 1972. But from jail, he was running an organized crime syndicate. The FBI was concerned at the time that the reason why Margaret Sherry, the judge's wife, was also assassinated with four bullets in the head because they thought that he was trying to kill his political rival because she was running directly against Hallett. A very interesting thing just happened. Very, very spooky, very unbelievable. This crime happened September 14th, 1987. 1987, okay? Nobody's talked about this case for I don't know how long, but it, because it happened in 1987, I come to this here cemetery and right over there, right there right there see it i walked up over there in search of judge sherry's grave i walk up and the guy says how you doing and i guess what i says oh i'm looking for somebody so we're looking for the grave of judge sherry this guy was pete hallett's best man or rather the, he was the best man at Pete Hallett's wedding. Or Pete Hallett was his best man. One of the two, I can't remember. The best man. What's the likelihood from 1989, uh, from 1987, to come over here and walk right over here to this building and I end up meeting the best man to Pete Hallett's wedding? Or rather, the best man to uh, that guy's wedding, which was Pete Hallett, the mayor of Biloxi, Mississippi, the one accused of uh, telling the mobster Nix of the Dixie Mafia about $500,000 being missing in his uh, lockbox at the bank, thus saying, uh, Judge Sherry was on that lock box. He's the only one that could have gotten access to that uh, box. It ended up having a mob hit on said Judge Sherry. But what's the likelihood? 1987, and then I meet the actual uh, person who knew uh, the mayor personal. Goes further. 
I go over here. Right here. Standing right there, a few minutes ago, okay, is a woman, and I told her I, I was uh, looking for Judge Sherry's grave. That woman says, oh, I talked to him two days before the murder. Two days before the murder. I just, I mean, what's the likelihood of, of that happening? Two people who were physically there, 1987, best man versus a person who went to a party and shook hands with Judge Vincent two days before they were murdered. It's a huge coincidence. It's just spooky. I just can't believe it. Now I saw a story and it's a coincidence that this is here. I didn't know it was this graveyard. I happened to see a story about this stone. It weighs tons, I guess. And I guess it was Hurricane Andrew, apparently, knocked it down. And it stayed down for like 10 years. And then they were talking, and when I saw it, there was no color in it. The original one had color. He says, I'm going to have it colored. And sure enough, he had it colored. That's one serious stone. There's my bride. This person was a mason. Any spirit that wishes to be heard? Is anybody here murdered? Any spirit that wishes to say something, say your name. Your spirit say yes. There's the beach. Any spirit that wishes to leave a message, put it here. Hopefully the wind doesn't interrupt. I think it will. Any spirit can read their name.
Any spirit wishes to speak, speak now. I see you have a fresh grave. Did you know that you were dead when you died? Were you surprised? Was death better? Did you feel better upon death than you did in the physical world? Any spirit can speak. Uh, that was his best friend from people who I was just talking to and what's the likelihood a trillion percent likelihood that I would meet up with somebody that physically knew Mayor Hallett I see you were recently buried. Do you wish me to tell your family that you are perfectly okay? Spirit, can you hear us? And there's the video. I hope you found it informative. I hope you found it interesting. Didn't mean to bounce around so much, but we're talking uh, things that happened uh, in the 60s, 70s, and 80s. So I was getting some information there. And uh, Judge Sherry, I didn't mean to call him Shirley. And that's because I was talking to a girl named Shirley 20 minutes before. Shirley, you jest. But uh, that's the reason why I, was, I had called him that. It's Judge Sherry, by the way. But I found it interesting. Don't forget, Mayor Hallett, he did the eulogy on Judge Sherry. They were best of friends. They were like this. Best of friends. Did he mean to get him killed? I doubt it. I don't think he meant to get him killed. But somebody was going to get killed. Whether it be him or the other guy, because he happened to tell the mob boss, hi, the, the $500,000 uh, that you had me put in my uh, safety deposit box for you, yeah, I says, uh, you know, he, he said that uh, all of the money was uh, stolen. Well, whose other name was on the, sa uh, the safety deposit box? Well, only Judge Sherry. So that statement ended up getting his friend killed. No doubt about it, getting around it. I found it interesting that the Dixie mob boss, Mr. Nix, was involved with Buford Passa and having a guy named White assassinate Buford Passa in the process, killing his wife also and hitting Buford Passa in the jaw. Same thing with uh, the grocer, 1972, right? He got convicted of uh, shooting uh, uh, Frank the grocer and his wife put a bullet in his stomach and then Judge Sherry's wife 
was directly against Hallett in trying to become mayor of Biloxi, Mississippi. All right, we're changing venues. We're leaving now. We're going to go and uh, to another place. Don't forget to check out part two of this, by the way. Don't forget to wear headphones. If you don't wear headphones, you won't hear anything uh, when it comes to the spirit sessions. Part two of this video will be more of the spirit session. Okay? So glad you could stop in here at Crypt's Graves and EVP.